We're on the battlefield for Jesus. Come and join us in the fight. We're marching against Satan and we're standing. As we have now fed on food, let's continue to be fed on the word of God. So let's turn in your hymn books to hymn 246, Pentecostal Power, hymn 246. Make sure we sing it out, sing it out. Power 
goes against tradition to have a teenager speak at a set of meetings like this, but I really prayed about what the Lord wanted us to do. And um, scripture says, let no man despise thy youth. And I remember what it was like being a teenage preacher boy and wanting to serve the Lord. And uh, a lot of times young people have something to say that is worth listening to especially if they're preaching the word of God. So Jamari is one of our young men. He's going to come and preach this time. Good evening. I am um, just grateful for the opportunity I have to preach at this conference tonight. But um, like I always do, I just want to respect our elders tonight, so I'm going to name a couple of you guys' favorite hymns. Number one, precious Lord, take my hand and help me up. Number two, it is well with my soul, but my knees hurt really bad. Number three, just a slower walk with thee. Number four, go tell it on a mountain, but speak up really loud. Number five, give me the old timer's religion. Number six, blessed insurance. <laughs> and then number seven, guide me, O thou great Jehovah. I've forgotten where I parked. <laughs> I'm going to read something really quickly, and we'll go to the message. At a local Burger King, an elderly couple came in and ordered one burger, one order of fries, and one Coke with two glasses. When they got to their booth, the, main, the man placed a napkin in front of himself and one in front of his wife. And then they proceeded to divide the fries. They cut the burger in half and divided the Coke equally. A gentleman nearby noticed and offered to buy them another burger, fries, and Coke. The woman then said, no, you don't understand. We've been married for over 50 years, and all our life we agreed to split everything right down the middle. Her husband then began eating as she sat with her hands in her lap. The gentleman nearby noticed and asked the lady why she wasn't eating. She replied, as I said before, we split everything right down the middle, and it's his day to use the, use the teeth first. Uh, let's get into the word. So God wants to use everyone in this room, including us young people. He wants to use us for his glory. But in order to be used by God effectively, you have to be saved. God, don't get me wrong, God can use anything. He used a donkey. He used the burning bush. He used evil kings. But there's something about saved people. Saved people have a testimony when they get saved. So it helps reach other people with their testimony. After being saved, it's important to be discipled by someone with wisdom from God, someone that can help you grow in your walk with Christ. And then once you begin to grow in Christ, you're ready for witness, and you're ready to tell others of how you got saved and um, what he's done for you in your life. You know, that's the main, main focus of this conference, is to go out and tell others about Christ so that they can too. Your testimony is powerful. And so tonight we're going to look at how Paul encourages and instructs Timothy of how to be an effective leader, regardless of his age. Let's pray and ask God um, for blessing on this service. Heavenly Father, I just pray that you help me. Um, Lord, call me. Lord, use me. Use this message, Lord. It's not me, um, but it's you, Lord. Pray that you speak through me. Lord, I pray that you would um, give these people something, Lord, that they can use in their life so that they um, can honor you with it. Lord, I just pray that you bless this service tonight, and I pray that you um, would use it. I pray that you would keep us protected and safe. Lord, I just pray that you would help us always to continue, Lord, just to learn from your word tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Turn with me in your Bibles to 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter 4. First Timothy chapter 4. Read verse 12. First Timothy 4.12. Let no man despise thy youth, 
but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. So let's look at the context of um, this chapter. Paul is addressing the problem of false teachers in Ephesus. And Timothy had to deal with these leaders um, who were spreading incorrect teaching, who were spreading false teaching, and it affected the way, uh, it affected um, the people of God, the church of God. And that's so important, as we heard um, earlier that um, yesterday, we should be watching, we should be watchmen of those false teachers. Um, it's just so many today that are just getting people and losing them, just getting them off track, really, it starts to make people go away from the doctrine that they've always stood in, that they've always um, held firm in, uh, their standards, their, um, their qualifications. You see, in, in pastors, um, they start to lean towards the world. They start to lean towards what makes people feel good. And so they lower their standards. They lower their qualifications, you know, for being deacons, being bishops, anything like that. That's what the world does. But Timothy had to deal with these leaders. And so Paul is um, writing a letter to Timothy. And it was centered about how he lived out his faith as a pastor. Timothy's conduct was very important. It was important to keep from looking down on him because of his age. Um, the same is true for us. We are called not only to hear the word of God, but actively um, apply it to our life daily in our actions and to avoid deceiving, deceiving ourselves as John 122 says. So age is not the primary focus on attention in Paul's instruction, but it's rather, um, it's rather being used by God. It's rather the quality of T Timothy's leadership by example. So this isn't just for pastors. We're not, this isn't just for pastors to be a good example. We are, we're called to be a good example um, of believers also. But the youth who are following God need to be encouraged because this world is so wicked. Um, it punches us and it causes young people to fall. So in this verse, I see four points that I wanna discuss this evening. Number one, the opposition. Number two, the opportunity. Number three, the obedience. And number four, the obligation. So number one, the opposition. See, let no man despise thy youth. Now some people might despise the youth because they feel that they lack knowledge or that they lack wisdom. It's plain in James 1, 5. It says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not and this shall be given him. So this means anyone. If God calls a young person to do his work, regardless of age, God will use them to do his will. If we are willing to be used, we have to be willing. Um, we have to be willing to be used by God. And for every opposition, there should be somebody who is willing to be right beside a young person, right beside them to help them out um, in their walk, Amen. discipling or encouraging the youth um, to keep pushing for God. Amen. Let me give you an example of a couple of young men who were called or either discipled. Um, Samuel, we see he was called by God at a young age. Um, his mother told him that if God, God calls you again, because he called him three times, if he calls you again, say, um, here am I, Lord, your servant. Then we see David, he was chosen by God. He had other brothers who were stronger than him. He had other brothers um, who looked quite better than him. And he was actually overlooked. But God said, no, I'm using him. And notice that he was humble. Um, he was meek. Um, he didn't look like he can be used. He didn't look like uh, he wasn't the strongest or the best. But God used him. God called him. And then we see Joseph. Joseph was an interpreter of dreams. When he was younger, um, his family, when he told him his dream, his family mocked him. His family laughed. His brothers were jealous. No, um, just because somebody, somebody's doing a work for God 
and we get jealous, uh, that's really a heart problem. That is really a heart problem. If you, if you get jealous of someone that is doing the work for God, that is a heart problem. You need to check your heart. Even though he would endure trials, um, was going through uh, Potiphar's wife, um, he had God's favor on his life. God blessed Joseph's hands and his efforts and it saved his family from being destroyed during the famine. But his father, he gave him the coat of many colors and that was um, a token of honor. And there were people who tried to despise the youth. Now we want to look at those people. It says, let no man despise the youth. So we see the disciples, the disciples, they tried to despise the youth. They were the ones walking with Christ. The ones right there beside Christ everywhere he went. You know, it could be the closest or look good, the closest people um, who, who look like they are walking with Christ, who look like they are the top-notch Christian. But really, they can be the ones despising the youth. Turn with me to Mark 10. Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10, start at verse 13. And they brought young children to him, that he should touch them. And his disciples rebuked those that brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was much displeased, and said unto them, Suffer the little children to come unto me, and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of God. Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter therein. And he took them up in his arms put his hands upon them, and blessed them. So we see that Christ doesn't despise the youth. So if we want to be Christ-like, why should we? Why should we despise the youth? Even us, as youth, we despise other youth. Um, think about my little brother right here. Um, you know, he might, we might be going so winning, and he wants to pass out tracks. And I'm like, hey, stay over here. Stay over here. No. That's, Christ tells us not to despise the youth. Christ tells us that you can't enter into the kingdom of God um, unless you um, be like a little child, humble. And so here's an example um, of how people despise the youth. So what we need to remember is that um, we need to stay encouraged when opposite, uh, opposition comes. I'm sorry. Opposition comes. Earlier, I'm just looking at Mrs. Brown right here, and the devil really tried to, um, tried to stop. He tried to work um, their house um, earlier in the morning. Early in the morning, I'm um, caught on fire. And every time that the work of God is being done, you know he will come. Every time. The devil doesn't stop. The devil doesn't care. There were little children in the house, little babies. He doesn't care. to trust in God. Elders, keep encouraging young people because we need it. We need it. Number two, the opportunity. Look back at our text verse, 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers. And so sometimes we get that one opportunity to witness to someone or to lead or win that non-believer to Christ. And we can win souls if we're being the right kind of example of how a true Christian should act um, and how a true Christian should be um, 
most importantly, in the heart. God gives us opportunities. Um, we can witness freely um, here in the U.S. without being um, persecuted. We'll, we, we will have persecution, but it's not to the point where um, our missionaries in other countries, they're trying to be killed for giving the gospel. So we have um, that free right to witness in the U.S. Um, we have um, opportunities to achieve goals in Christ. Um, far beyond what we expect, far beyond our water streams. We can um, make it happen through the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. The door the Lord opens and can never be shut. Amen. God gives us opportunities to serve him, and that's the least we can do compared to all the mercy and the grace he's given us, and we should want to give him our heart. And so attending service every day, anytime the doors are open, just be an example, being um, a good testimony. Be all and challenge yourself to step out your comfort zone and do whatever is needed for God. Look for ways to serve in church ministries, um, whatever it is, tra taking out trash, playing an instrument, or preaching, or teaching the word of God. And so we have to be a true example of the believer. Don't just be a reader. Don't just be a listener, a hearer, but a doer of the word of God. Amen. So there are so many times when we let the opportunities um, just slip away. The ones that God presents us, um, like we heard last night, somebody's blood be on our hands um, because um, we didn't take that opportunity we had uh, to share the gospel with them. We should not take the opportunities that God has given us for granted. Life is not forever. Life um, is like a vapor. And we don't know that we have our whole life ahead of us. So we have to be a good example and keep a godly testimony. Amen. Turn to Romans 12, book of Romans. Romans chapter 12, read verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. So remember that Christ did not come to be served, but he came to serve. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, he came to serve others to serve others. That is God, our Lord, our Savior. And so who are we not to serve? So number three, um, obedience. Obedience in word, in the conversation, and in charity. So in word, the way we talk should show a good example in how we witness, the way we communicate, the way we show our emotions. You know, foul and vulgar language is not how, an, how a Christian ought to act. This world normalizes it so much. Yeah. But just because it's the norm doesn't mean it's right. right. Colossians um, 6, let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. Romans 12, 2, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And so us as the youth, we have to live by higher standards than the world. This means um, telling the truth even when it hurts. Lying is an abomination to the Lord. Ephesians 4.25, wherefore putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. And so how can we win the loss and we lie just as much as the loss. Um, that's not of God. He is the truth, Christ, Amen. the way, the truth, and the life. And we live in a world that people think there is no absolute truth. Um, it just shows how really stupid the world is. It shows how dumb the world is. You know, as you see, I'm a black boy, but I can say I'm a little Asian girl, and that would be fine because there's no absolute truth. Yeah. 
but the truth is, is that I'm a black boy. And so no, it's not okay to lie. Um, it's not okay to lie because it's an abomination. God hates lying. Abomination means great hatred. Turn to John chapter eight. John chapter 8, verse 44. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar, and the father of it. It's plain and simple. Um, We're really acting like um, a child of the devil if we lie. Because we see that the father of lies is the devil. In the beginning, um, he tempted, he lied um, to Adam, uh, to Eve in the Garden of Eden. Did God really say that? Did God really say that? See so many false teachers, um, they twist the words twist the words of God. God says don't take anything out of scripture nor add anything to it. So then look at our conversation. The verse also speaks about our conversation. The word conversation in the Way of Life Encyclopedia, thank you Dr. Club, means manner of life or behavior. And so our speech and our actions should be different from the world. Um, Ephesians 5.11 and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. And so we, if we act like the world, if we look like the world, um, how can we witness to the world? We have to be separate, have to be separate from the world. Then also with my actions, we should be able to earn the respect of others with your actions. Jesus as a little boy in the temple, and um, we see He got left during the Passover, but he was in the temple, and he was a little boy, and he impressed impressed professionals, um, teachers, um, scholars, in the way he talked, and his actions. Um, Luke 2, 46 through 47 says, and it came to pass that after three days they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions, and all that heard him were astonished and at his understanding and answers. Then I want to look at in charity. We are to have charity in all things. Charity is sacrificial giving. 1 Corinthians 16, 14. Let all your things be done with charity. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily produced, Vote, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in truth. I'm going to stop there really quickly. It rejoices not in iniquity. When we have charity, we don't pleasure for the things of this world. Um, we don't pleasure um, in our sin. Sin, it brings us temporal happiness, but at the end is destruction. Um, I saw on a t shirt that sin is like a credit card. Um, enjoy now, but pay later. Amen. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, and endureth all things. First Timothy one five. So now the end of now the end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart and of a good conscience and of un, of, of faith unfeigned. So it is loving and not expecting anything back. Poor widow in Mark 12, she gave all. Says, um, says in Mark 12 that she gave all. I want to turn there really quickly. Let's read in Mark 12.
Mark 12, verse 41. And Jesus sat over against the treasury. And behold, how the people cast money into the treasury. And many that were rich cast in much. And there came a certain poor widow, and she threw in two mites, which make a far thing. And he called unto him his disciples, and saith unto them, Verily I say unto you, that this poor widow hath cast more in than all they which have cast into the treasury. For all they did cast into in of their abundance, but she of her want did cast in all she had, even all her living. So in charity, it's, it's giving, not wanting anything back. That's how we should be for Christ and our witnessing. Giving all that we have for him. Because really, um, we are his. We should give him our whole heart. Christ wants our whole heart. And we should be able, we should never get to a place where we're stingy enough um, not to want to give our all. Giving our all for Christ, um, no matter what it takes, um, through this world, so much peer pressure. But giving it all, giving up our comfort zone, giving up um, the things that we enjoy, but giving it for Christ. Are we sacrificing some of our time to give lost people the gospel? And really, if we're saved, like I said, we're, we belong to him. We are his. Our soul belongs to him. We are Christ. Um, how can you give charity if you never receive charity, though? Most kids don't even know what charity looks like. Um, these kids without, with broken homes, without a father um, or without a mother, we see the bus kids that come in every Sunday. Not all of them are like that, but most of them are. These kids in Chicago, um, just without a father, they need someone to love them and to give them the gospel, to witness um, that one soul, um, that one soul saying, will anyone care? Will anyone care for my soul? Number four, the obligation. So we see the obligation in spirit, in faith, and in purity. So we're obligated to walk in the spirit. Obligated to walk in the spirit. When people see us, they should see the right kind of spirit, the godly spirit. What kind of example of Christ are we if we're displaying? What example are we displaying if um, it gets to the point where people don't even want to be around us? If we walk in the spirit, we won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Psalm 51, 10 through 12. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Once saved, there should be a difference because of the Holy Spirit. Once the Holy Spirit enters our heart, we become humble. We become meek. The Holy Spirit led, leads, and guides a believer if we listen to it, if we listen to him. Christ said, my sheep hear my voice. Philip was led by the Holy Spirit into a wilderness. Philip was led to the Ethiopian eunuch. You know, sometimes we might have to go into those places where, where we don't want to, in those wildernesses, and the places where we might not want to go. I'm leaving our comfort zone. But it's all for Christ. Amen. It's all to see um, a soul saved. And know that you gave them the gospel, that um, their blood is not on your hands. And now they can say, someone has cared for my soul, but it's their choice to receive it. We're obligated to walk in faith. The Bible has a lot to say about faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. It's important to stay strong in our faith and not compromise for anything. It's easy to compromise in this world. Yeah. Trusting and leaning on God. We have to trust him and lean on him. It's the best thing we can do for our life. Um, our natural desire is just to lean to our own understanding. It says, in all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct thy paths. So as a young person, I want to please God. But the Bible says, without faith, it's impossible to please him. And this is why youth nowadays have to make sure that they have a relationship with God. It's 
not a religion, but a relationship. There's multiple religions out here, but they don't have a relationship with their creator, with God. I heard it best. You can't please someone you don't know, and you can't know someone you don't believe exists. So if we walk by faith and not by sight, it will give us boldness, it gives us courage to live for Christ and give the gospel to anyone we see. But when our faith wavers, we compromise. We compromise and get lenient to the word of God. And we lack. And then we have false evangelizing, false preachers, false teachers. These people that think they have it, the prosperity gospel, just giving out what they think people want to hear. What we need, what we need today is what people need to hear. We're not going to get anywhere in our life if we just hear what we want to hear every day. Um, if we hear what our heart wants, because our heart is deceitful, deceitfully and desperately wicked. So it's, we lean not on our own understanding. Lean not to what our heart wants, what our own flesh wants, but what God wants for our life. And then we are obligated to walk in purity. Purity can be defined as an emptying out or being clean. Also to be morally clean and without blemish. Purity is related to guiltless, related to blameless or innocent behavior. Now we live in a filthy world and we all can agree with that. And uh, me as a young man, immodesty, um, TV, radio, um, the filthy language. It's so hard um, to walk purely in this world. Um, but with God, all things are possible. Because with God, all things are possible. That means we can be pure if we walk in his footsteps. In these public schools, it's, fine, it's hard to find purity. It's hard to stay pure. In this world, it's just this whole world just desperately wicked, desperately. And what we need the most is purity um, in our thoughts, and then we can be right everywhere else. And so I thank God for a school that has good dress standards. Thank God for a school um, that's trying to be um, separate from the world. Because when most of these young people, most young people um, that are Christians or are raised up in the church, um, they want to be on both sides. But it's simply put, be separate. Separation, being pure. This is what young people need the most, on purity. Just seeing so many pe young people fall and just go away to the world. Um, go away because they weren't trained right. Go away because they link to their own desires. So now we apply this to soul winning. We apply this to witnessing to others. There is a gospel message that these souls need to hear. And so even when we're witnessing, if a lady, if she's immodest, instead of seeing her um, in modesty, we see her as a lost soul. Being pure doesn't only mean outwardly, but it means in our thoughts also. Purity starts on the inside. It starts with our heart and our mind. Today, again, purity is normalized. Impurity is normalized, but that doesn't mean it's right. We're more, we're more aligned with God when we're pure in mind. Matthew 5, 8, blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. So Job, we see him, he made a covenant with his eyes. Right. Let no wicked thing come before my eyes. We're obligated to walk in purity. And that's the type of vessel that God wants to use. So it's a daily challenge to follow God as a young man, as young people, as adults too. To walk in God and live in these, living in these times um, it's hard, 
um, to steadily just be, be okay. It's hard to steadily um, be joyful or lifted up because this world, it just brings you down. It knows how to pull you down. This world, it knows how to discourage you. But like I said, um, elders, we need your encouragement. Young people, look up to them. Follow in their steps if they're in God. There will always be opposition. We cannot let that discourage us because we know anytime we're in the will of God that he, the devil will come. So the opportunity, the opportunity, the obedience, the obligation, and the opposition. Let's remember always, um, always just to take these things and apply them um, in our witness for Christ. Go all in for him. Let's pray. Only Father, Lord, we just pray that you would um, you would help us, Lord, just to stay um, stay grounded or stay in your way. Help us, young people, Lord, um, to look up to the people you put over us. Lord, respect our authority. But Lord, also, just being pure in heart, having the right mind, Lord, just wanting to win souls for you. Pray that you bless this night. Pray that you bless the other preaching. And I pray that we just continue, or to have a heart um, to witness um, lost souls for you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Thank you for viewing.